that we're literally wired for the art, this ability to need to self-express and to behold each other is also really fundamental. And I don't think we value the arts as integral to our health and well-being. And that's something that I'm really hoping we can start to shift. What are those ways that you begin to value this as a necessity, not a nice to have? The great medical interventions um, are not solving the problem that physicians and prescribers also are feeling really good about the ability to prescribe something beyond pharmacological interventions or to be able to prescribe something at all. And so there actually is this halo effect on the prescriber. And then again, there's also another sort of uh, residual effect for the caregivers' families where they have something they can do. So we, we did an economic analysis through the NeuroArts Blueprint on music and Alzheimer's, just one slice of dementia. And what we saw was there was a three to one return on investment by just having a music intervention. And that's pretty extraordinary. I think there's some real promise for it, um, it and, and there's a lot of momentum behind it. Is it the same as being in person? No. Um, is it good enough? I like to say substitutes will do. Um, absolutely. And increasingly, you know, if we use technology in service of humanity, you're going to be a hologram in their room, right? You're going to you're going to be um, on a virtual reality screen where they're they're going to feel like they're part of that space. And so, the, I think the more we experiment with technology to get to people who we can't get to or they can't get to us, um, I think it's really important. Um, but it, for sure, I think it makes great sense to be able to do live streaming and to try to do the programming as personalized as you can.